welcome to episode 55 of Sonic Talk. I'm here live, as always, with GX Echidna. Hi, I am here in a microphone place where things are happening with my mouth. And the man who refuses to go on camera, Alex Peel. Is that just how you're going to describe me now? No, not Jason. We have a we have a things. very clear picture of him right there in the window. Can't you just describe me as the mysterious rogue or something? I don't know if I describe you as mysterious. I am extremely mysterious. I, I mean, you got you got the big saucer eyes. You got the great big white mustache and the so, let giant me guess. red crown looking thing. And you're for so some did reason you just, uh, did you leopard put a leopard print. Did you put a you need Funko a mustache. thing? A Funko pop in as my avatar, Chris. No, Maybe it's some a, other day. Pop. I'll see what, if I can what, find what? the worst Funko pop that has been made. But in all honesty, it probably is the Sonic one. I wouldn't mind the Sonic one. I think that one looks fine. No, it. I, I mean, think sure, that says a lot about you. I think it, it still looks like he's been taken over by the corn people. But at least he doesn't need irises. I mean, wait. The, every, yeah, irises. Okay, and anyway, let's get on to uh, what we've been playing and watching. Um, for me, I should mention uh, the Shenmue. Uh, one and two HD collection that just came out for twenty nine ninety five. Jason, and tell us I, about the Shenmue collection <laughs> and your realization I made about it. The horrible <laughs> mistake of playing Shenmue one instead of just going straight to Shenmue two because <laughs> Shenmue one has not aged well at I, all. I told y'all this when the when Shenmue three was announced. These games that will not have aged well. Either. <laughs> oh my god. It's it's so bad. Like, I, mean, I have a huge nostalgic attachment to this series. Like I bet if I replayed these games now, I, I mean, would still love them. I remember my <laughs> memories of Shinmu 2 because that one it was more going from odd job to odd job. You could skip mm. time to where you need to get to be for the next day and everything here. No, um you are uh, investigating the death of your father by a guy named Lan Di. And you're talking all over your local town and asking questions, and you'll like uh, like the whole sailors thing. It you have to ask like ten or twelve different people before you finally get well an I mean, answer of you know to where, where to the bar. To get, yeah, <laughs> they tell you. Well, ask at the bar at seven p.m. It's like twelve noon. There's nothing now that I know the bar opens at 12, seven p.m. Twelve noon. There's nothing left for me to do except uh, maybe buy some capsule toys that have like or, Sonic or or Rich play some Fire. arcade games or play some Space Harrier. I love. I, I've always loved playing those arcade games. But yeah, like Shenmue One. That's like Rio's little mystery adventure. Where Shenmue and then you go, is and then you go Rio's the grand adventure across China. <laughs> and then you go to the bar, and they're, they're still kind of vague, and they tell you about a bar called Heartbeats. But you look on the maps that are strewn throughout the city. You don't get to just pause and have a map. That would be too easy. <laughs> no, you have to walk over to where there's a map and look down on it. And it zooms in. And it shows, like, the locations of, of all the businesses. Except for the place you're trying to look for, <laughs> which is the Heartbeats bar. <laughs> so finally, somebody gives you directions that it's next to the, where the slots are. So you have to go down. And then a big fight happens in the bar. And you get some more info about this guy named Charlie. So now you have to ask everybody around town where Charlie is. And certain people only can only talk to you at certain times of the day. And finally, you find out where he is. And then they tell you about a phone number. So you go to get the phone number. Then they, <laughs> that tells you to go that you can go to Warehouse 8. Now, you don't know where Warehouse 8. And that's where I am right now, where I'm ta constantly talking to everybody about where warehouse eight is oh and man it took me forever to find so i kind it of is i'm kind of curious and tedious so tedious it's insane I'm, I'm kind of curious then when did this release in comparison to um grand and grand theft auto san andreas because no, that 19 was, it, it, uh, i think 1999. you say grand theft auto 3 this came out in 99 it's uh, almost okay. 20 years old this is a so and this was a dreamcast launch it, window game yeah and this was yeah, the first, this is basically, this is the basically big, like has six well i think it came in about a year later but it was a big epic uh you know open world 
world role playing game. So my question then becomes: but here's, oh, here's the other thing. If you want to <laughs> skip, skip the whole day. If you're done for the day and it's like 6 p.m. and you just walk all the way home because you can't do instant, uh, instant um, transportation except when you exit your house. Um, and you get there at 7.30, you cannot go to bed until it hits 10 p.m. It's on a <laughs> real clock, and it's just insane. So I, I kind of want to ask then, does this mean that ob obviously there are design issues? This is not – if you're going to ask me which Shenmue game should I play, I will tell you Yakuza uh, 0. Um, <laughs> but yeah, see, my that's question is – is this game Genesis? And I know that's the wrong question to ask on a Sonic podcast. Is this, like, the first of its kind? Because stuff did come using yeah. this It's It's structure. pretty close. Like, very, like, very, it's very, there, very close. I mean, there are some... elements that, ha that came into Yakuza definitely happened in this game, like walking around town freely and going to arcades and actually playing the video games that are in there. But, e in but even of... down to something like... Um, and you will obvi obviously Rockstar... People had... want to fight you and you got to do like a virtual fighter. In terms of open world uh, games where you walk around and explore and do things, like basically before this, there was um, Elder Scrolls 1 and 2, which let me tell you, those haven't aged well either. And also there's... Omicron Soul, which I think came out at basically the same time. So Beyond that, there really isn't much. So to to I, I, I think the, the kind of thing I'm trying to get at is it sounds like it probably hasn't aged well, but it also sounds like there's a very good reason for that in that there isn't a lot of it to draw from. It kind of helped establish what is now one of the bigger genres in our industry today. And, Basically. And it, doesn't right. and it doesn't necessarily mean you should go back and play it, but I think it's probably worth mentioning before you just write it off as you sh this is a bad game in <laughs> 2018. Just kind of remember, yes, it is, but that's because it ha other games are kind of building off of the stuff that this and some of the really early Rockstar games made. Shenmue yeah, was a game. It's not like um, it's not like the original Super Mario Brothers or Tetris, where it was rock solid A plus to begin with, and then they they spawned off from there. Well, no, because Nintendo more... made these, and this was made by Sega, and <laughs> Sega doesn't do anything right on the first try. But um, like Shenmue is a game best played with. I'll, with rose tinted glasses and and, and, and like uh, an understanding of the context of the of the gaming world and that a was great released. big Alex Peel mask. <laughs> yeah, they, he's right though. Nostalgia is basically the only way to get through this. Like, I am, I, I'm large. officially going to give up on Shenmue One right now and just skip straight to two because I have just had enough. By and large, three D games from the mid to late nineties haven't aged especially well because these were all these were games that were pioneering a new form of interactive entertainment. So like um really aside from maybe aside from a handful of exceptions, I can't get into most of the 3D games from the 32 and 64 bit era simply yeah. because these games have been iterated so much and so much better by newer, better games. And this is an issue that I ran into with Crash Bandicoot, which I'm going to be getting into later. But, uh, Jason, I, I assume like you have more to say. Crash Bandicoot. I would say that if this was more of a remake like Crash Bandicoot or Spyro instead of a remaster, they probably would have been, uh, been able to fix some of the issues that I have a big problem with in the game. I mean, just simply adding the ability to wait probably would have improved things immensely for Shenmue 1. <laughs> this, right. I, I, this and having, this it, and having like... the map uh, that you can pause and see instead of just having to walk around and find one. This sounds more like it needs a Majora's Mask 3D remake rather than a um, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy remake. Well, hey, Crash Bandicoot did, do, did tweak the gameplay to make things more accessible. 
Like, not as much as Majora's Mask did. I don't know what they did with Majora's Mask because I didn't actually play the uh, 3D. They made the notebook far more, far far easier to manage. They basically made everything a heck of a lot more convenient to get through. Like they good because I didn't like that game (laughs) to begin with. Mm, uh, We'll have words later. It was too hard for me when it first came out. I mean, okay. okay. And, um, I don't know what I'd do without without the improved menu system. My other thing stuff. is, uh, <laughs> you know, we watch a lot of anime. That, well, not a lot, but we all three of us have been watching One Piece God, for a long time, and we're <laughs> we now watch, up to, we I watch think a we're da- we watch a lot of damn Shonen Jump anime. <laughs> right. <laughs> Between this and Dragon Ball Super, and now I'm doing My Hero Academia, and I uh, finished up the first season on Funimation streaming, and uh, that's a good little series. I like where that's going so far. Oh, um, and it gets now, better. Now, when you say <laughs> a good say little anything. series, I would say both of those are understatements. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I like the spin it takes on the superhero genre that, like, 80% of the Earth all have their own quirks, uh, a.k.a. superpowers, but a superpower could be something as simple as having a tiny little flame on your finger, you know? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, and that, and so 20% don't. Um, our main hero, um, I can't Deku. get his... Deku Midori, is yeah. the simpler. No? Midori is his last name, yeah. <laughs> he was born without a quirk, but he wants so bad to be a superhero and studies him because he <laughs> loves... All Might so much, and then he is the best shown in protagonist. I it's, about, it's a story about the biggest superhero nerd getting hit, basically getting screwed by fate and then <laughs> having his wish get granted. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, he, he does get his wish granted, in and then case. basically and, having to become yeah, learned, the shown and jump learned. superhero that needs to beat all the bad guys and be the one with the biggest. Best, I have the personality to rally everyone else, that type of thing. It, yeah. Your that's typical like, Shonen Jump stuff. Hey, hey, but like, where well, there's some important stuff, like his, his, the superpower that he ends up inheriting, he can't control it all without breaking his hand or breaking his uh, arm his or body. legs. <laughs> yeah, his entire body. It breaks his just, body. <laughs> it's just too much for him, so it's, it's kind of like if you've ever seen The Greatest American Hero back in the early 80s, where the guy gets to be a superhero, but he can't control how to fly, so he's constantly doing this while he's trying to fly up in the air. And it's basically him learning, you know, the ropes that way. And then he's also got his uh, rival slash kind of friend, but he's also a an complete and total a-hole. <laughs> uh, what's, the name? what's his name? Grenade guy? Bakugo. 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 I cannot remember anybody's name in this series. Kachan. Oh, you will eventually. Kachan. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he is... Just such a dick. <laughs> oh yeah, he is. He is. He, he is. is prime, he is Gary Oak's dick. <laughs> it's like he, it's like there must be something good in him because he's uh, you know Deku didn't uh, want him to stay as a friend and like him, but ever he's been pissed at him ever since the day that he was nice enough to pick him up after he fell off of a bridge, just because he's took a little bit of pity on him. <laughs> I, I can tell you, I'm on the f- fourth major arc i think there's about are you on season three or season two i don't know how i don't know how to divide them up into seasons but it's it's like the third or fourth big maybe fifth big arc i don't know um but they kind of bring out better elements of bakugo using the people that eventually using the classmates that eventually kind of stick with him we'll say (laughs) <laughs> yeah, one problem with the series right now is there's just so many uh, students to get through. You don't really get a chance to know know them all very fast. Like you still oh. don't know anything about the kind of rock guy in the background or the demon looking pink lady. Where you're at, you got you got like 50 episodes until the end of season three. Where you're at, so yeah. but I'm I haven't seen much past that, but I'm sure they're gonna flesh out loads of loads of characters during, I'm during gonna, that time. I'm gonna tell you right <laughs> away. Um, if you like this, if you like My Hero Academia, definitely check out Assassination Classroom. That is Ooh. also a uh, really good one. That's where they're all trying well, I'm to more like, into this for the alien superhero. Dude, right? And my screen went blank for a sec. A, You're fine. The superhero uh, genre of it, like, you know, One Piece is pirates with superpowers as well. That are, 
and how I, each I, power is so incredibly unique that you wouldn't see in American comics. I literally Shonen Jump as a comic book. Yeah, their, their their <laughs> philosophy is blank with superpowers. Uh, I will say this: like if you like if you love Japanese takes on American superheroes, Tiger and Bunny is another really good one. You know, just just check it out when you can. I think it's on Hulu. But um, all right, are we are we are we done? I'm done on my end. Uh, what did you what do you, uh, you what have yeah, what have you been playing lately, Alex? Well, a lot of things, but I'll just talk about Crash Bandicoot. Uh, technically, the insane trilogy for the Switch, and I have such a love hate relationship with this game, mm. but. Like, I do think it's, I, I honestly have had more fun with it than I have with Mario 64. <laughs> because I think between the two, that Crash may have aged a bit better. At least Crash 2. Mm, no. Not Crash 1. Mm. Crash 1's a fucking disaster. Well, okay, I'm not going to over exaggerate. I will agree Crash with 1. you there, but I'm not going to agree that it is aged better than Super Mario 64. All right. Well, anyway, Crash 1. Um, hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> not just hard as hell. Poorly designed. Unforgiving. Like, uh, Unforgiving, like, yeah. This is a game where your character is like... I was so game. happy when I beat and that game. The I slightest like, oh my God. brick will just kill him right off unless he has one of those difficult-to-find tiki masks or something, which well, they uh, don't spread out as much. Yeah, it's weird. Is two and three are challenging, but not near as bad as... Oh, of two course of they do, because they want you to see all of their lovingly designed death animations. <laughs> That's the most important part of a platformer in two, 1996? 1996, Very yeah. close, yeah. very close. 96, yeah. 97, 98 for Crash 1, 2, and 3. But anyway, so like Crash 1, this was, I feel like this play, this does play the game, like a game that clearly didn't know quite what it wanted to do. Because, yeah, it was, it was trying to, it, much like Shenmue 1, it was trying to do something that hadn't really been done before, namely the the, the 3D platformer. Like, but before, when Crash was in development, like, in terms of 3D platformers, there was maybe that Jump Flash game on PS1. You got there really Bubsy 3D. Bubsy 3D actually was in production at the same time as Crash, so you can't count that one. It was in production at the same time as um, Mario uh, 64. Yeah, it was. Which was the big deal because it was outclassed in every possible way. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> but the original Crash, like, it, it's like almost a 2D platformer in a sense because it's an extremely linear game. The whole series well, that, kind of is, though. Like, yeah, it, but this one is, this one is pre so linear it's practically just on rails. Because there are very few forks in the road. It's mostly just one straight path. Well, that was kind of how it was. Because they didn't really have a... They really didn't have the Mario 3D design where he had a big open yeah. world for him to run around. Yeah. It was just I, him going forward, him going backwards, yeah, yeah. sideways. And yeah. <laughs> I find it kind of funny that you say the first Crash Bandicoot was kind of on rails. Because I mean, that's second... all of the Crash games. <laughs> The second one has has other has other places to go. The second one has alternate paths and stuff that you can take, Not and many. more of like and Not hidden many. gems and stuff that you can collect. You can, but there there are not many. Like there are literally there. This is a f Crash Bandicoot is effectively the precursor to what 3D Sonic is now, in that. You have a lane, and you just have to accomplish things with that lane. Okay, well, anyway. Um, in t now, in terms of difficulty, like that, this is, where, this is where the game really falls flat, the first one, because it doesn't really do a good job te te teaching you through context about enemies and obstacles, and things just kind of feel sort of thrown together. It doesn't really feel like there's been a lot of care taken to, to, to the design of, of the game or how the game is paced, where the bosses are. The bosses themselves, for the most part, just feel kind of lazy and sometimes frustrating and lazy. Like, the, the 
I forget I forget the name of the kangaroo. Um, Ripperoo. Ripperoo. His mm -hmm. the, his first boss battle is the most frustrating one I've I've encountered in the entire franchise so far, because you've got to because you've got to jump perfectly across across these small platforms, hit these dynamite boxes, and memorize me memorize where he's jumping. Make sure the dynamite boxes. Let, float float down this this river down to where he's going to jump and then it ha and there has to be time to the time so they will explode while he's there and there is a at least a little bit of luck involved in getting him especially towards the end and if you screw up once if you if you if you like sl slip off one of those little platforms you got jump onto and fall into the river you just die like there's there, there's no Second chances, you're just dead, and you gotta start all over. And it's like I forget how many hits it required for him, but that game, that 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 one boss battle took me forever, and it just felt like there was no real skill involved in doing it. Now, um, in Crash Two, if you actually play the game linear, linearly, one level at a time, uh, I mean, uh, the from right from right to left. Well, let me start over. Crash 2 attempted to um, sort of go the Mario 64 route in that it kind of tried to introduce a hub world, but the hub world was basically just like a circular, uh, like a circular room, and you can just play, yeah, it's play the five levels and you can play five order levels at a time you in any order you want. But the problem with that gameplay style, especially towards the end, is that even though you could technically play them in any order, they were clearly meant to be played in a certain order because there are certain, because like in this game, if you play in order, the difficult, the, the, uh, the difficulty and the enemies and the obstacles and stuff, they are shown and iterated on much more effectively than in the first game. Like I know, I remember like towards the end and um, in, the, in the final batch of levels, there's these two levels that have pistons and these electric box that have these patterns where they move their tentacles up and down. And, each tentacle position requires a different attack. Either you spin into it or you jump onto it. And I made the mistake of playing the very last one. And so I didn't really know how a lot of, how the pistons and the robots work. And I died a lot until I figured it out the hard way. Then I played the first, the first one with the pistons. Then, like, as you go through it, like, you first you encounter the robots where you have to jump on them. And the pistons, like they fall, they, they smash down very obvious in a very obvious manner, so that you you don't get killed. You, you'll you'll know what they do. And you can you know how to avoid them. And throughout the course of that level, teaches you about these about these elements. And so, if I had just gone through the game from 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 left to right, like I like I had been before, then I I wouldn't have had these issues, and and and, and like it would have just been. Much easier for me to 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 get through that that set of levels. So like, in terms, but but like Crash Bandicoot Two, that is such an improvement over the original. Aside from that one, aside from that one issue, the level design is much better. The difficulty is at least a bit is at least a bit more forgiving. And on and on top of all of that, the uh, the boss battles are at least easier, if not also better. Like. That, that 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 game also had a boss where you had to jump from platform to platform, but in this game, like, but but in this you had to to avoid falling into uh, being on a platform that fell fell into a pit, and it was much easier for me to understand what 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 the what the level was trying to get me to do, which was to get me to lead the boss onto a platform that was about to fall so that he gets damaged and eventually dies. And the platforms were bigger, and the patterns were easier to recognize. It's just like they they really figured out how to design levels, how to how to design three D boss battles and levels in this game compared to the first one. Now, I haven't played the third one yet, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm hoping right. that one's at least as good. Uh, are you looking forward to uh, the Spyro collection coming out next month? Well, Spyro was always my boy. Back back in the day when it came to three D platformers, so yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of feel like Spyro is the more standout one that will have held up better. 
I, I'm oh. open. Like, I think that regardless of how well the games hold up, my nostalgia is going to push me on through. Because uh, I had, like, this strange era between Genesis and Dreamcast where I guess kind of played, play, played games at kiosks and at friends' houses, and Spyro was always an out, a, 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 a outstanding title for me because it's just so fun to just run around in that game and burn things. <laughs> you can you can reliably have nostalgia carry Alex through a game. <laughs> as really as true. illustrated in the first game discussed today. Right. Yes. Um, so I've been anything, uh, you've been playing GX? So I've been I haven't been playing a whole lot. I've been certainly wanting to play a bunch, but uh only two things I've really had time to put into have been um iconoclasts, which I'm really close to finishing. I'm going to hold off on my discussion for that until I can finish it and kind of collect my thoughts a bit better. Uh, best, best way I can describe it, um, I, really like the, I really like the developer before they made this game. Uh, I played a lot of this person's freeware games, and it feels, it feels spectacular. I... Just love the way that the character moves and the flow of the game. It is very much a Metroid-style game in that you are trying to uncover a giant map that has some connections, has some unlockable upgrades, that type of stuff, um, and has a has themes in it that do reflect the title of the game, but. I'll have more to say about that next time I'm on the show, I'm sure. Uh, the other game that I've been playing has been the Mega Man Legacy Collection for Nintendo Switch. Uh, Ooh, nice. Because I've been I've been putting off getting things <laughs> until I feel, felt I could reasonably afford to get things, and then I wound up two. with four Mega Man collections all at once. <laughs> So, Plus, you got X2, huh? I got X and X2 and both of the Mega Man 1s, and I look forward to putting more time into each of them. I was able to finish Mega Man 1, I was able to finish Mega Man 2, and I'm currently <laughs> working on 3 as we discuss this. And um, Whenever I played these previously, I used to play them on the GameCube collection. I'm one of the weird freaks of nature who is not ambidextrous but yet somehow can wire his brain to press A for shoot and B for jump. <laughs> uh, I, I believe that most wildlife experts would want to tag my ear and follow my um, migratory patterns for that reason. But beyond that, um, the GameCube ones are based off of the PS1 ports, which means they had a little bit more to them. Uh, they changed the way that you would switch weapons. Uh, they gave you some hints. The, I think they had some sort of, like, slightly easier mode. But the ones on here are just straight-up NES ports, which is kind of weird to try to adapt to the really old NES menus of having to switch between weapons and... As I'm playing through this, I was always used to the feeling that, okay, I stick with the Mega Buster because I know I can do it with just the Mega Buster, and of course I need to preserve all my weapon energy, and these playthroughs have kind of taught me, no, you don't preserve weapon energy, you <laughs> use it to just get through however you can, and... Uh, I've been finding that to be a much more satisfying and interesting experience. Um, one of the features that I like from it is that it has implemented a rewind function, uh, which I cool. think was also... Was that also in the... No, that wasn't in the NES. The NES uh, Classic didn't have rewind. It just had... Um, it just had save states. Yeah. Uh, but it's actually really useful because while I'm certainly willing to push my to bang my head against the brick wall that is all the main stages and robot masters I am not willing to give that luxury to the wily stages because the wily <laughs> stages are something 
Um, Mega Man 2 has particularly notorious Wily stages in that one of them requires you to have a full bar of um, weapon energy for the crash bomb and then figure out the puzzle of while guns are shooting at you to shoot every single gun that's shooting at you and occasionally walls that are protecting them also if you miss any single shot you will not have enough weapon energy to finish it also you have only exactly enough and there are a <laughs> lot of ways in which they will try to trick you to think well this way is more convenient if you shoot through this wall but you can't shoot through this wall because if you do you won't have enough energy also it's you're gonna have to grind to get more energy if you die also you will die because you won't figure this out on the first try so the ability to just rewind and avoid that bull crap yes. is very valuable to me um it's not a perfect port uh a lot of discussion has been set online about there being a bit of controller delay uh i think you can circumvent that mostly unless you are unless you have so much muscle memory with this game that you need that instantaneous millisecond response which honestly i'm not entirely sure if you can get from most hd tvs but the more weird part about it is the NES games do have a slight lag in the audio. And this much I can't really explain. It seems like a really weird thing for them to not have pa uh, have not have um gotten right and for me that's not a big deal. Uh I can get th having a slight delay on audio doesn't matter that much to me. Um if you're looking for perfect emulation, I might recommend looking towards the PC or the uh, other console versions. But I've got this version right here. Yeah, that's that's the same version I have. That's also the version that most people crap on because it has the switched A and B buttons that nobody likes. Except <laughs> yeah, it sure does. Me that I have. Also, that version has the arcade but has the arcade games, which I am the only human on earth who likes them. <laughs> but yeah, I buyer be warned, but for most people that's going to be perfectly acceptable, especially if you can have a portable version of these games to play that you can also play on an HD TV as well. So, there was one Thing that I forgot to mention in regards to Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot for me, and that's that um, I've I've never I've never really been the biggest fan of collectathon platformers, and that certainly that plays a pretty big role in my preference. I think between the two games, so like if for anyone, I Crash is a game. Crash is the kind of three uh, platform I'd recommend for anyone who like this who likes just to have a straight shot straight to the end. No need to uh, search, uh, run around collecting coins or yeah. They want they want the fruit just give you extra lives, basically. Yeah, they don't want like coins in Mario. And the and and the, the gem was another thing that you collect. They're on other linear paths. So like it's for me to me that like it can it 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 that makes it that really helps it hold up in a modern context because I find those kinds of games. That, to, uh, Except the first one punishes you if you well, do not yes. hit all the boxes. It just starts drop. Here's Funny. all the boxes you missed. It stops dropping them on you, and yeah, <laughs> and one and of them finally he's lying ones. down. All, uh, 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 I guess, this is an, I also why I like never do that death. again. This is also why I <laughs> never I ever do that again. Three D Sonic you will get a span from from Twitch. Twitch. This is why Super Mario Galaxy is my favorite line of Mario games. Period, because it's that kind of game. And it's worse than Coco Bandicoot. You really feel guilty when they start just smashing all the boxes on top of her. Oh, I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, I just wanted to kind of add that. So, like, if you like three D, if you like linear three D platformers like Sonic and Mario Galaxy, I I think Crash. Not it's not as good as those games, especially Mario Galaxy, which fucking destroys it. But you know, it's I, it's it's worth it's worth the money. I think. Speaking of Sonic, I believe this is a Sonic podcast. No, it's not. It's a Crash Bandicoot when? podcast. What's one time in our history where we've been that? Right. 
So maybe we should talk about Sonic news. Like, uh, I don't know if any of you, I'm a big wrestling fan myself. Um, I don't doubt any of you saw SummerSlam uh, two weeks ago. I saw their outfits because uh, I, I, I tried to uh, yeah, the so, Sonic Stadium news then. So a popular tag team known as The New Day uh, came out in Sonic-related type gear. Um, Xavier Woods, who is uh, one of the members of New Day, has a uh, his own YouTube podcast called Up, 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 Down, Down. It's got a lot of wrestlers on it, like WWE champion AJ Styles. Often they'll go to Super Potato and they'll show him shopping for games there and such. So Xavier Woods is a, a very big video game fan, so he made uh, he helped make <laughs> outfits for the New Day that, um, while not addressing completely Sonic, were obviously based off Sonic itself, like um, Sonic Knuckles and Tails. Like I remember seeing the rings on there. Yeah, Kofi Kingston had a all blue and silver outfit, but he had gold rings around his boots. <laughs> um, what's his name? Biggie had uh, was just kind of in a knuckles outfit with red the uh, areas with white spikes on them, and Xavier so, Woods had a, the best uh, a silver and yellow with uh, a little bit of blue with tails, uh, two tails on them in one spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. yeah, like what I admit, I'm I uh, I'm I don't really care about wrestling, but that's 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 cool, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, other cool news is uh, to assist, Sonic. To Comics. assist Jason in this, um, there is this thing. So yeah, um, that's. I'll have to wait. There's a delay because I'm. Also, to, there's. Uh, um, I, I don't know why. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, there they are. It it appeared for a brief second and then left. Okay. Good job, um, video. Sonic comics are coming to the Nintendo Switch thanks to the Icky Pen app. We. Hey. I can read them on what the eight inch screen, nine inch no screen. No longer it is. <laughs> do you have to rely on the Sonic <laughs> Mega Collection on GameCube to view Sonic <laughs> comics on a game console? All right, uh, that only killed the first issue, I think, and the rest were all covers. Um, well, actually, doing digital comics on a Switch wouldn't be so bad because you tap, you double tap on them, they zoom them in, and you can go panel by panel. I, I guess, but I think I still prefer doing it on an iPad. But anyway, it's an $8 a month comic subscription service, but at first I was kind of sold on until I realized the kind of uh, companies they have. They have <laughs> IDW, which is a big, which is their biggest one, uh, Valiant, and then a bunch of people I've never heard of in my life, <laughs> including some French and Japanese manga ones. If one of the French ones has, like, Asterix and Oblix, then I'll be sold on that. But otherwise, uh, I don't know. I'd I mean, be kind it's of nice, surprised it's nice to have a, a subscription of, service. I'd be surprised if they had, had a bunch of European comics, but not Asterix and all, and but not Asterix. That'd be yeah. a weird omission. <laughs> I. But I mean, it depends on the collection they have. But right now, it's not really something I'd, I'd go for. But it's not bad. Do they, so, do they at least have Judge Dread? So, sorry. Yeah, they have Judge Dread. Good. So I'm definitely interested in Inky Pen. Um, I think for me, eight dollars for IDW, depending on how quickly they match the actual releases of those comics, that would be something I'd be fine with. Because I am perfectly okay getting a subscription to comics if it, because the things I collect anymore are just the trades. It's it's a pain in the butt to have a long box of just comics i mean i just do digital things off comicsology now <laughs> and for me like if i could get that and then also get a bunch of other things for the price i would have paid anyway that's a boon for me i think it just depends on what it's going to look like like how is it going to control is it going to be comparable to comicsology if I have an Inky Pen account on my Switch, are there? <laughs> is it also available on a Android app? Because admittedly, I haven't like looked into this. But <clears throat> if they already have one, I haven't seen anything about it. Uh, will they get more comic publishers? Because I can tell you, there are definitely some that fit in that general wheelhouse that would probably fit. Um, how would it compare to Comixology Unlimited? Because I would like 
to maybe subscribe to that, but also they don't have all the publishers that I would be interested in. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions right. that still need answered about this. I think it's a neat idea. If it were just Sonic, I might not necessarily get that, but if they get a couple other IDW things, especially if they're able to snag some of the IDW Disney lines, then that would definitely be something I would like to at least check out. Yeah. Okay, you guys go on to the next story. My dogs are barking. I'm going to check uh, in on that real quick. Oh, uh, crikey. That is uh, not a euphemism. Okay, uh, so I, I guess it's gonna, he's going to miss this, the Pez dispenser thing, huh? Oh, so, uh, joy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, Sonic is going to be a, a, a soulless Pez dispenser from, uh, from uh, what, what are they called? Uh, the pop people, uh, Funko. Funko, pop vinyl. <laughs> Uh, so, so what you're, you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to like buy one of these things, and you're just gonna be able to like hold it in front of somebody's face and just have Sonic stare down at them until they're driven mad, and then give them a Pez. And sure. that's like that's gonna be the whole marketing sure. thing for this. Whatever. <laughs> um, that, that that vaguely qualifies as news. Sure. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, like I guess there isn't much else to say about it, huh? Uh, it's it's a collectible toy in the form of another collectible toy. Uh, the universe oh, is some sort of horrible, horrible Ouroboros, and um, culture is just going to eat itself, and <laughs> this is the end. Th this well, you is, know, you this know. is how the world ends. With, I think I with might Sonic actually... as both a Funko Pop <laughs> and a Pez dispenser, at the, the same movie. time, <laughs> but you know, I'm actually gonna. I'm actually. My, I might actually buy this if I see it in the store, because so, uh, I mean, it's, it's Pez. I haven't had Pez in a while, and I might be cool to guess. I don't know. Stick it somewhere once I'm done eating the Pez out of it. For those of <laughs> you who have not been exposed to this nightmare yet, uh, this is what it looks like. Um, uh, look into its soulless, soulless it, eyes. I, I don't know who in, was exactly in charge of designing this for Funko. Uh, I assume they're made by some sort of just robot <laughs> that, that you just load the vague information of a popular culture icon into, and then it just spews out little vinyl figurines that just... Like, like, it's like the Hello Kitty factory just started making things that weren't Hello Kitty. How did you know, they? Who? Excuse me. Who loaded Breaking Bad into the Hello Kitty machine? <laughs> like, what? What happened? Oh, hey, I, look, I, I know. Look, uh, guys. I know you like Deadpool. Deadpool doesn't go into the Hello Kitty machine because that's gonna <laughs> screw with the formula. Everything goes in the Hello Kitty machine, Chris. Everything. And now we have a uh, episode title. <laughs> Not everything goes into the Hello Kitty machine. <laughs> but, um, right. like, well, Jason, I just, while you were gone, I decided I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to stick it up somewhere. I, I still maintain that it's not the worst one they've made. I will maintain <laughs> that it is the worst idea to have a pop vinyl that is also a Pez machine. I mean, I don't know about the worst idea. I, like I a, think it's, it's the worst like idea. Show host being president. Well, how about them having $12 cereal that comes with a tiny <laughs> pop vinyl? I would accept that because... The cereal itself isn't its own line of collectibles because we now have collectibles within collectibles. I'm waiting for the Sonic the Hedgehog pop vinyl Pez dispenser Beanie Baby. <laughs> oh, they, they, hey, look, I know that the Thai company has sold out a lot over the last two decades. But they would not stoop so low as to make a Pez dispenser. Oh, I, I disagree. Chris. That's like two license that's like two or three licensing like licensing deals in one. We they, live in a, they, they stop at one, Chris. We, we live in a one. world where getting where we are getting pop vinyl Gears of War video games. 
Okay, well, now like, I want like nothing, nothing is impossible at this point. There is no dark hole that <laughs> commerce can go down farther than we are now. Now I guess I want to try to make it a... really uh, got out of that, because, like, I've mentioned Sonic. I help my brother out oh, sometimes at his conventions to, <laughs> where he sells uh, his sister-in-law, I mean, his wife, some... Uh, genre jewelry and stuff so i was in stockton con uh, last weekend and every other booth was selling piles and piles of the pop vinyls yeah everywhere. that's because they only have them they bought them when they were popular and nobody wants them anymore because they're hot they're, they're ugly i know i'll never understand how those things were popular they choked think like, geek to death <laughs> they grabbed their little feature. They grabbed their little featureless hands around Think Geek and GameStop's throat and wouldn't let go until the twitching stopped. So wait, Think Geek's dead? I, I don't I, think they're uh, doing particularly uh, great, but they were also I'll bought by GameStop. GameStop so now is, is pop vinyl. Uh, you go in there and like the first half of the walls all pop vinyl everywhere. You know, you know what makes me sad is that, like, I think, I believe they make, like, a Darkwing Duck pop vinyl. Oh, they and, make like, a if, freaking pop vinyl of everything. I own if, a Brack and Zorak pop vinyl because there is literally <laughs> no other reasonably priced figurine that I could buy yeah, I and I would buy yeah, like, if, they me, didn't like, ha if they had them. I would totally have bought a, 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 a Darkwing Duck figure or whatever if it doesn't look like a soulless piece of crap you know they like, make those you know why does funko have to exist here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing why i is, like funko yeah. i like oh, funko. I say funko pops obviously funko, I, I yeah remember funko they makes <laughs> good figurines they make other lines of things that are actually good i have a very yeah. nice looking set of ponies up on one of my other shelves that are like mostly show accurate and actually look good and don't <laughs> look like dumb horrible hello kitty babies um this is not them somehow this is the one that blew up and <laughs> admittedly there are ones i like like it's the ones where it already looks like what it's supposed to be. I would absolutely buy a Bay Baymax pop vinyl. No, Jason. No, Jason. No. <laughs> what? No. Eyes no. right where it's supposed to be. No. No. Oh, wait. Ah, Hold up again. Give me a mustache. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like the Eggman one's not bad either, honestly. Like, instead of soulless eyes, it's sunglasses. So, so I guess my point is... Coming soon to a game store near you, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Pop Vinyl Pez Machine Magic Cards. There. That's also a Beanie Buddy. Be yeah, Pop Vinyls. <laughs> yes. Pop Vinyl Sonic the Movie. Oh, hey, actually, that's Speaking a of really which. nice segue into a right. Sonic-related topic. My God, Sonic someone Jason's else did it back. than me this time. I'm so wow. proud of you. <laughs> Because we got pit there. Well, we don't have them here, but there have been pics of product from from that production. There have been pictures yeah. from the Sonic the movie production all over the internet lately, oh, and one of them the is Green like Hill. Green Hills, which is a, a county side area, a little county town. Welcome to Green <laughs> Hills. And wow, is this not even close to an adaption of it? Well, like, come on, like this is a live games. action movie. You really think that we were going to get checkerboard hills? <laughs> <laughs> who knows, who and, knows what uh, they're going to do with it at this point? Like, there's a, now here's one I'm not sure whether it's Sonic or not. There's a gr guy in a green skin, you know, costume driving a car. And that's either Sonic or some other character. Um, like uh, maybe Tails. Sonic. Some people are saying Sonic, but there's also scenes of, like, this bag of sand on the ground with a mirror <laughs> on it and a little microphone thing that I think is supposed to represent Sonic. Well, I is imagine that, that because they they're might trying use... to get the sun air area around it. I so, imagine they use different things in different situations. Like, I, that would probably be pretty hard to put into a car, Jason. Challenge to <laughs> listeners. I would like to see some sandbag with a mirror fan art. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Like well, I guess that will get the, a nice reminder of how few listeners we have. Who, who now, we also got, yeah. which this is a part that scares me. Jim Carrey recently showed off his latest haircut for uh, Sonic <laughs> the movie. 
And it's he's not completely bald with a mustache. He's like I just got a mustache, but of course I got this beautiful hair here. But it's just a wacky little must uh, <clears throat> haircut going across the top of him. Well, of course, so it's that's Eggman origin story, Jason. Maybe <laughs> maybe it's Eggman before you know his hair gets fried or something. Well, as I, I recall, help because if you can't have the name Eggman, if you're not shaped like an egg in some kind of well, way, as I recall in the synopsis, they're actually calling him Robotnik, right? I think they're they're calling him Robotnik in the material. Hmm. That would be if they did. That'd be really weird based on Sega's current, um, we'll say, yeah. uh, standards and practices. They, I, I, they haven't acknowledged that name since what? Sonic Adventure Two? <laughs> uh, no. Um, Generations. Huh. Oh, well, I yeah. don't remember it. They did. Yeah, uh, Tails. Tails looks at uh, uh, young Doctor Eggman. Goes, Doctor Wobotnik, and. He says, nobody calls me that anymore. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I remember. Thank you. That's the last time they recognized him as Dr. All right. Obama. I guess it hasn't been that long since they've acknowledged that name. I, but I, I mean, really. not what I was expecting. <laughs> here's, the th here's the thing. And I think no, it's kind of funny the because... the thing right there. <laughs> Go on, Chris. <laughs> Ignore why go why on bother? Point. And I mean that on a more metaphysical sense. Why bother going on at all? Congratulations, Jason. You have instilled ennui into me. <laughs> Wait, you weren't already you weren't you weren't already filled with ennui? Seriously? So more to wow. point. Um okay. I, I know the weird kind of distance in tone that I've had from Everyone else over here uh, has kind <laughs> of been I, I um, you for that. <laughs> that I don't feel miserably upset about whatever this thing is going to be. Uh, I think it, at this point it's realistically to assume <laughs> that this isn't going to be Sonic as perfectly aligned with what we currently think that he is. I think he's probably going to look slightly different than what we might expect. I think everything in it's going to look different. I don't think it's going to be a direct interpretation of any sort of gameplay elements. And well, I, I mean, like, Sonic is looking for the power rings instead of the Master Emeralds, so that right there is a pretty big change. Yes. <laughs> Unless you've got Knuckles Chaotix. Whatever. Uh, I, I just, I think it's, it's probably important to bear in mind, like, my feeling, I am just exactly as worried as you. Like, I am worried that they're going to screw it up on... But I'm more worried about them screwing it up on a more design level. Like, I don't care that it's not necessarily looking like a certain way or in a certain format or a certain way that I expect of it. Because Sonic is a franchise that has looked 50 different ways. I mean, I'm only not expecting this thing to look like Sonic because it's a freaking live-action movie and a live-action right. Sonic. It's going to look hideous if they make him too close to what he, he is in the games with that weird Yuna eye thing. Like, they could, they could just have, they could just have Jim Carrey look like Jim Carrey, which is not going to be hard because Jim Carrey always looks like Jim Carrey, despite his multiple attempts to not. Um, <laughs> but it, it's, I think there's, I think this is a situation where I know you guys are worried. I just want to say, Make sure your worry's in the right place. It's And that it's not, well, this character looks like this. Well, this setting looks like this. Well, this this isn't Sonic that I know because of this plot point or not. I mean, like, I mean, hey, we're not freaking out over Green Hill not having checkerboards here. <laughs> yes. Uh, admittedly, part of this message is more directed to Jason, but sure. <laughs> Uh, Jason is much more of the immediate reactionary uh, member of our group. Right. Well, here's the one thing I don't have a problem with at all is Ben Schwartz, uh, who is from a yes. comedic actor for Parts and Recreations, <laughs> and he's a, a well-known cartoon voice actor, will be voicing Sonic in the new movie. Uh, you might remember him as Dewey Duck in the new DuckTales, <laughs> yes. or Leonardo in Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, I love and Roger Craig Smith. But I love Roger Craig Smith too, but hey, he's but this, like, guy this guy is a is damn really, good voice actor, so yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. 
He does comedy too, so that gives me hope that maybe this will be a lighthearted movie, or at least attempted lighthearted movie. Oh God, please don't be grim dark. <laughs> it's not going to be that. It's, it's almost. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's not I guess be. Sonic Team isn't writing it, so they they made a buddy cop movie. They're making a buddy cop movie very clearly, so I don't think yeah. it's going to be that grim dark. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I can't. I can't wait for it to be a buddy cop movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's Zootopia without the zoo. Uh, it's, oh my god! It probably is going to be like Zootopia <laughs> without the zoo. Oh god, no! Like so, like I guess we're going to be racist against the hedgehogs or something. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> I mean, Zootopia was an excellent movie, so if they can make that work, fine. <laughs> I mean, listen, listen. I'm a bad example for. I'm a bad gauge for this type of thing because my perfect sonic movie is going to be a live action adaptation of the ova movie so <laughs> you can see where my head's at when when we talk about this oh, I think no, all the blue that. lives matter that's going to be very confusing <laughs> okay I, I don't think they're going to go that far that'd be really bad taste <laughs> Jason. i was joking all righty um we're not uh, like make light of that but um so uh but uh, I kind of it did interrupt you, and I apologize for that. Were you kind of going anywhere that we haven't gone yet, <laughs> Jason? I uh, mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I think uh, Ben Schwartz is a fine choice for the, the movie. He's good um, at what he does. Yes, yes, yeah, he is. It's like I'm happy with Jim Carrey as Dr. Eggman, but I just hope they make him, you know, actually look like a Dr. Eggman. Um, <laughs> with that the gigantic orange mustache. Don't worry, he'll look <laughs> like Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, he's gonna uh, look like the Eggman from Sonic 06 <laughs> my long running theory has been that he's just going to look like the mask sorry Jason I know that you're trying to move us on I'll stop talking <laughs> okay and now we're going into comic books um, who here has read 7 and 8 I have I have very recently All right, so good. Whisper is the best character shut up yeah so we got a uh, we found out the big reveal that who who was behind Doctor Eggman's uh, you know base the whole time, and it's Neo Metal Sonic, which my makes my house sense. Makes... It's not like he hasn't disguised himself as uh, Doctor Eggman before. So I guess want to say my housemate Corey Holmes completely called this one. Like I I, I mentioned this back at uh, our our live episode. <laughs> he just nailed it. <laughs> Although I wasn't expecting the Neo Metal Sonic angle, I will say that. No, that, that, that was still a twist. I don't think anyone saw it coming. Ah, it's a good one, too. I did not admittedly see that coming, but I also wasn't thinking that that would be the particular thing that they would draw from specifically, and <laughs> that this is right after Sonic Forces. But I can't complain about it that much. I It doesn't... It doesn't do much for me, but I don't feel bad about it. I think the reason they did that is they had the resistance team. So, you know, Ian was able to mold his own little version of the freedom fighters that he's familiar with into this book by having Knuckles in the, you know, regular Sega game be the freedom fighters mm. in their own case this way. I can't believe Knuckles is the commander. I still cannot believe that. <laughs> I, will, I will say. Well, because it's canon to the games, but, you know, he's still not that good at it. Flynn is still skilled at making silver not oh, suck. Yes. Oh yeah, like he, yeah. he's always been really good at silver. <laughs> silver is very lovable in this uh, issue eight. He's kind of he's, he's still a dork, but he's you know he's kind of a lovable dork, like dorky rookie hero who's very lovable, and he's also really good original character still because Whisper. I, I love that character, and I I admit that's because as someone who is who's and who's kind of awkward in social situations. I, I, it's pretty cool seeing a character like that in Sonic, albeit it seems Whisper to be is murder a, Fluttershy. A drama. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I still, uh, I still love the way they did that. This, this, so was like, "Hi, what's your name?" She was Whisper. And they, they like, <laughs> okay, why are we whispering? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, that sure was a joke that was made <laughs> in the comic. <laughs> And I, and Sonic, yes, of course, Bobby. understanding his his own universe's naming conventions, has to tell him that no, that's his name, you dork. But, uh, but it, yeah, like these are a pair of really fun, action-packed issues that were 
Yeah, yeah I gotta say, uh, the first four issues were a little slow going because all it was mainly was introducing new characters or introducing characters you're familiar with to these situations, trying to find Eggman. But once uh, issue five has hit, and since then, it's been a, a really quality story. You know, issue it, it, eight's it, been the be- more issue, and more and more involved. Issue eight's the best in my mind, as far as I'm concerned. You're saying, Chris? I, to me, in my mind. We are still kind of in the introductory period. Like, true. This yeah. is still very much the world building. It, it, it's not that I don't like what's going on so far, because I do. Like, his writing is still his writing, even whenever it's not the best story. He's still really good at. Inflin is still really good at doing what he does, and he has a good art staff that he's working with, and they are producing quality comics. I think the issue is, as someone who has spent as much time with Archie as I have, there's just the part of me that thinks, okay, what comes after the introduction? Because that's the thing I want to see. And we're still in the introductory phase. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, Um, that's true. My problem with the issues one to four is that it felt kind of like one whole issue going on. It did. It was kind of released as one almost yeah. like over the course of you know a single month well actually uh just to let you know this week uh the the trade paperback of the first four issues came out as a graphic novel okay then well, i what you're saying is that i <laughs> shouldn't be online right now that i should be driving to my comic store <laughs> no, no we, we we aren't saying that chris we, no, we, i'm just adding that to the news because i it just but, hit uh, me in my head i mean i i knew I kind of figured going in that this wasn't going to be what Archie was when I stopped reading it, because Archie was a comic that had, like, 290 issues behind it. I'm not, I'm not expecting Archie. I, and I'm, just was, waiting, I'm just waiting I for them to get to the fireworks factory. But, like, for me, I was feeling a little empty after the first four issues because the world just... I, I still, like, the... The loss of the Archie universe still kind of stings me a little bit, but with these last few comics, I feel like that that world is finally starting to come into focus a little bit. And surprisingly, it's almost kind of been enough for me. Like I finally see the kind of comic that Flynn is trying to make here. Now it's still doesn't. Now I still wish Archie was still running, but nothing, nothing really do about that. But this is this is good. I think this has the this has the potential of turning into a really really good kids comic and with the angel island fur potter coming up i think we're really gonna s- start seeing stuff happening in this universe like i got go on sorry no, i was just gonna say yeah i can I-, I can see that like idw as much as i kind of give them a lot of skepticism almost all of that skepticism comes from how scattershot that their um, My Little Pony franchise is, which is primarily what I experienced from them beforehand. But mm. whenever they do have a consistent writer and artist and vision of what they want to do, which is very much what they have with Sonic, they do quality work. It's just, like I said, like they're putting together a world, and I know they're going to put together a world, and I'm interested in seeing what that world is, absolutely. It's just I kind of look at it and I think, yeah, this is fine. This is fine, <laughs> but I'm waiting for the intrigue. You're you're basically kind of um, defining my feelings of the first five issues. So like, I definitely see where you're coming from. Yeah, it's it's. I can see that they have the people that they need. That they're doing the work that they need. It's just that I. I'm getting impatient, and I just kind of want to... I'm getting impatient mostly in that I was impatient during the Archie reboot <laughs> to see where they wanted to go with that after that. And then they went there, and then it ended. <laughs> yeah. And now, and now we're kind of doing the same song and dance with a different thing, which is still under the same... a lot of the same people, and what? doing... A lot of the same quality work is just I'm waiting for something to, I'm waiting for the moment to just be hooked like here I'm just I'm ha- I'm satisfied 
but I'm not excited. I predict that that moment for you is going to be coming at some point in the next four issues. I, I think we're getting close now. Because when Ian Flynn first took over, it did take him a while to really get going with, with his comics. Like, his run didn't get really good, I think, until like 175, when, when we had the whole big, big fight where Dr. Robotnik basically just came in and just destroyed everybody. So, uh, like, um, <coughs> so it was, uh, uh, like back then, six... I'm Ian sorry, Flynn go ahead. A, Ian Flynn had a lot of, he, he had a huge mess to clean up, and now instead of a huge mess, he just has to build it all from the ground up. And that, that, and, uh, but, you know, once he got there, once he gets there, he's always rock solid. So, so I think we're almost there. So it's probably worth mentioning real quick. Um, if you want a little bit more information directly from Ian Flynn's mouth in regard to all of this, uh, Sage, the Sonic Amateur Game Expo, is going on, like, right now. Um, I, oh, yes. You have a couple days from this specific moment in time, which is uh, August 26th, to uh, basically go out and grab a bunch of interesting fan... And that, that's the way I always look at it, is that it's just... It's a series of interesting fan games of Sonic. Maybe not good, but interesting. But Well, I've heard good th great things about Sonic Chaos. Also interesting, though, is that they actually recently had an interview with Ian Flynn. Um... I'm sure you could probably find it on YouTube. I don't know what specific page. You would probably have to search around. Uh, the only direct thing I could point you to would probably not be a great idea to do so on Sonic Stadium because it's another site, but um, that yeah. shall not be named here. Um, <laughs> oh, but basi okay. basically, <laughs> uh, it, it sounds like they kind of. It sounds like the interview kind of discusses. A little bit of his philosophy on how he's approaching this and um kind of his relationship with the franchise and some of the things that he's interested in and uh one of the things i liked about it was that whenever he's writing um dialogue for eggman he uh, is thinking about it in the voice of mike pollock <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> so We're, worth keep it worth keeping in mind uh we're trying to check out all right that sounds great okay and uh off of the comic book news and on to the video game news um our main video game news of course is team sonic racing that's the upcoming sonic game yay coming on <laughs> november december they still haven't set a complete street date on that one and the first one up is we've gotten team amy which was also a bit unusual it was uh, amy and big but then chow instead of cream <laughs> The best that race in the game. Is upset with. <laughs> and um, so the next one is, uh, I don't know if it's called Team Vector or whatever. It's and this Vector. one is interesting because it's Vector <laughs> and none of the other Chaotix. Instead, it's uh, Blaze and Silver. I, I, I'm going to be honest here. I, while I do like Espio, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, if, if it was a choice between Espio and Charmy and Blaze and Silver, I'm glad they went with. With Blaze and Silver, because we haven't seen them in a long time. And Blaze was like the one of the best new characters they they, they introduced back in the mid two thousands, as far as I'm concerned. So it's nice seeing her get some love. So I <laughs> and by the way, I love the designs on the cars and the, on these three, especially Vector and Silver. Silver's Tron looking car is incredible. From the future, which I guess has cars now. So I have been notably vocal. <laughs> and admittedly, admittedly, whenever I was as vocal as I was in the last episode regarding um, Cream and Cheese's exclusion from Team Rose, uh, it seemed like a travesty. Yeah, I was try I was being a little bit comical with that. I was playing up my, I was playing up how much that actually matters, and it it's not. It doesn't matter. It's just stupid. <laughs> that said, I don't feel as bad anymore. Because apparently nothing matters. Nothing is yeah. sacred. Uh, I, I don't know. Next is going to be... I don't know. Team Marine, which doesn't even have Marine on it. It has Danica Patrick and a 1-Up uh, capsule that it has 
is driving a car for some reason, and also I don't know Eggman Nega's pants. Uh, whatever. <laughs> that that's that that's the teams that we're working with now because everything is everything. Well, uh, I mean, I, you've heard me complain about the roster. I'm still not really a huge fan of the overall character selection. And I'm also not really a huge fan of the courses we've seen, although it does give me hope that apparently we will be getting courses referencing games as far back as Sonic 3. So hopefully that, that they do something interesting with that, like maybe Launch Space Zone or uh, uh, Hydro, like the Hydro City Sonic and Knuckles. Wait, no, no, it's Sonic 3. <laughs> like Launch Space Zone or Hydro City. So yeah, um, currently we have uh, one that's loosely based kind of on Planet Wisp. We have one that's loosely based off of uh, the levels from Holoska in Sonic Unleashed. And we have, or Ice Cap, I think some people are saying Ice Cap. And well, we have a, a track loosely based off of uh, Rooftop Run. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. Like when I, like those first two courses, Especially the second one. I had oh, no idea you were, were even miserable about those. <laughs> yes, I was. Like, I didn't even know those were referencing games because, like, I guess saw green level with a big tree in it, and then I saw snow, slept. snow stage. Well, and, and like you know, there it didn't have any anything that kind of told me it was from a specific location. Which, in fairness, if it's in Alaska, I guess they probably wouldn't because that was literally just the Arctic. That was, but the <laughs> snow stage dot JPG. <laughs> Yeah. But now that we got Spagonia, I admit I'm feeling a bit better about things because this is very much Spagonia. It looks I like want to see a little bit more of the great. tracks on video because I like the parts of the screenshots where they're going, you know, sideways against the wall uh, but, as they're racing. So that looks like it's going to be kind of interesting. Personally, like, if they were going to take something from Sonic Colors, I wish they had either done Starlight Carnival again or done um, that or, or done Carnival. that water. I can't get enough of that one. Yeah. Or, or that water level. I or the, what that or the giant food level. Or, basically, or the giant food level. Or basically any of the stages other than Planet Wisp, like which is Planet kind of Wisp, the least interesting stage. Like Planet Wisp, it has some nice looking trees. And that's yeah, Sweet Mountain would have been interesting. So now, um, see, It says that there's going to be like seven particular Seven roads, locations, 21 courses. And 21 courses, so it'll be a lot of the same, using the same uh, assets, I guess, and just changing the track around. It, defini it definitely sounds like a bit cheaper than yeah. um, Transform. Bet, like, yeah. I, I believe I, this is what Sonic and All-Stars Racing did, right? I think that had yeah. multiple tracks in the same areas. Like, I think we had multiple Billy Hatcher tracks and uh, m multiple uh, Seaside Hill tracks. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. It's been no, a while since I've played this game. You're <laughs> accurate. You're, that's... That's true. That's something that happened. I mean, Transformed had a little bit of that, but they also had a lot of one-offs that's like, uh, here's the Burning Rangers track, here's the uh, Skies of Arcadia track. Oh, I if to just get an H to just get a new port of that. Just, yeah, <laughs> give me... No offense. I, knew I, I want to see more of this game. I'm perfectly fine oh, with more of this yeah. game. We should talk about the story mode. In the but yeah. I want... I want I want a Switch All Stars Transformed. I just, yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. I, I want I it. Just put it in my hands. Xbox One can do it through Xbox X through backwards compatibility, but Switch got nothing. Switch needs it, and Switch got nothing. <laughs> but um, so now, in addition to these courses, we also got news on the story mode, which I admit this is something that I've wanted Sumo Digital to do for a while. Because, you know, I, I have no idea how terrible this crap always is. But, um, but, but yeah, like, this, I, there's going to be characters talking. There's a world map with, like, trees on it and stuff. You can unlock and Annika Patrick. You can't unlock you can Annika unlock Patrick. Wreck -It She's Ralph. retired. And, actually, why don't Now, Rick and Ralph that? would make sense <laughs> right now because his sequel's coming out. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird when you think of both of these Game, both of these, both Transformed and this game, came out at the same time as freaking Wrecked Ralph. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, true. that that might be why they can't put him. They can't just port this again or something because maybe they can't port it, oh. make another version with um, 
those particular licenses. Oh, they could totally remove Danica, Pat- Danica Patrick, and Re- Record Ralph. They I mean, could. That have, would just require. Effort. We have DLC characters like Rio Azuki and and, and uh, the, 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 the the football manager. Uh, football manager, yeah. <laughs> and we've got the Total War representative. You know, we've Team had like, three two. DLC characters that never Those came. Those were all on PC. Yeah, yeah they were. Team they Fortress Two that would, would require a license, but the other three wouldn't. But um, so yeah, like uh, so. The, the the big so like the big race guy uh, Dodonpa, which I think is a Dragon Ball reference if I remember Dodonpa. correctly. Dodonpa, yeah. Um, he's like this little Tanuki dude flying around in a little Egomatic type thing with a big old white mustache. I mean, as uh, probably Eggman in disguise or Eggman ro- yeah. or Eggman robot in disguise is Jason. So I figured it out. Stadium thing. Because, yeah. I mean, uh, I've played Sonic Free Riders, believe it or not. That's the Kinect game. And it basically had the same kind of, you know, <laughs> plot for a racing game where, so- where Eggman was uh, hosting or sponsoring the race and he had a little king crown on and basically he was the villain the entire time, of course. So, I'm ready to blow your mind because I've figured it out. I've, oh, I've drawn all the lines. I've push pinned all the push pins and put red string among them all and I've figured out what's going on with this character. You've got the I's not, and cross the T's. Yeah. You better not say it's Danica, Danica Patrick. I'm not no, 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 no. It's not Danica Patrick. So as you know, uh Sonic works in kind of a multiverse fashion where Blaze the Cat exists in a different uh world um, than Sonic. Yeah. That's true. So the the Perp- However, Sonic's world also does have a uh, purple cat character. So I am, <laughs> I, I am thinking that well, this is some sort of... Well, the eyes are similar. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm thinking that this is some sort of parallel rule between the two worlds, where Big would be that world's version of Blaze. So very clearly, because the the big eyes and big in the way that the eyes are... This is clearly this world's version of Marine. Obviously. <laughs> I, it, uh, tell me it doesn't make sense because I've it it solves it perfectly. I it mean Marine is a everything. raccoon, I guess. So it's it's I, the I, larger I, male version of this female character from another world. <laughs> I don't think so. I've yeah, I've solved I, it. I think I think Chris is right. I think he's got this. Fuck. <laughs> Sumo Digital's gonna be so annoyed. There's some interesting aspects that came out of it. You've seen the recent IGN interview online, uh, on you saw on YouTube. Um they're mentioning I guess there is gonna be online play. Um, I, I would hope so. <laughs> and um and during that you can if currently in the single player game you have to have like a speed, power, and uh, flight type of racers. But in online, you can mix and match all you want. You can have the three hedgehogs. You can have silver. Uh, you can have the team of Vector, together. Vector, and Vector. You can have, you can have three bigs. <laughs> or you big, three big, big, and big. big. Yep. No, you can't do or, that because then the race, cra- the race track gets too dense and it implodes in on itself. <laughs> all all bigs nothing but a herd of bigs racing against each other talking about froggy i'm coming oh that'd be great if every single racer who got involved was just big <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know well, that's why that sakurai won't put waluigi in it because every care every player is just going to be waluigi <laughs> when you go online it's going to be everyone waluigi <laughs> taunting every second of the match so, so, froggy, froggy. And re- regarding story mode, it's divided into, I think, six chapters. Uh, we, there are four different kinds of missions confirmed. Single, uh, single race, Grand Prix, Ring Challenge, where you challenge yourselves to get the most rings. And then Survival Mode, which sounds like a battle mode. Where I mean, you, or it like, could be like, it could be like Burnout, the- where you're, they're eliminating the, last, the person who's in last place every like minute. Oh, yeah, I guess that could work. Possibly. I mean, um, the previous game also had a battle mode, so it's still possible. It just but, depends um, on if the items are conducive to that. Oh, I, w- re- I wouldn't really say that they are, going by what I've played. But um, Oh, dear God. Oh, no, oh God. Oh, dear God. You bought that, Jason. Well, so, it can- so- the sh- 
The shirt came with the oh, figure. I, I guess for, the, for those of you that. just listening to the audio, Jason and paid American dollars that apparently he earned and traded it for the shirt of the Sonic the Hedgehog pop vinyl from GameStop <laughs> that also came with the pop vinyl figurine. Oh, wow. That is... You are just you have just completely given yourself over to capitalism, haven't you, Jason? You're, you oh, just... He's given himself over to the <laughs> anus of capitalism. <laughs> he just uh, he just bent over and said, "Just give it to me." Jason, I'm into Jason, it. When we socialists take over, hey, I got a dead Best burn that I'm stuff. Back there too. <laughs> we will. I we will drag anyone who bought a shirt uh, who bought a shirt like that. Out into the streets and burn them in the shirt. So, better get rid of that. The views of Alex do not represent those of the Spin Dash, Sonic Talk, or the Sonic Stadium. Uh, and also not socialists, for the record. <laughs> we, do, we, we do not believe that people should be burned in the streets unless... <laughs> I can't even finish that. Uh. <laughs> See, because you agree with you agree with the statement, Chris. Like that's no, how much you no. care. <laughs> uh, that's just peak worst capitalism right there. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Okay. Um, Let's get so, on. Uh, uh, I guess the final thing we should talk about is because the weird been basically two months since well, the last podcast. Well, I wasn't quite done with story mode. Okay, you wanted um, to mention something else about story mode? It, well, it, it sounds a lot like the single-player world tour mode of uh, Transform. Because in addition to the different... But, different I, but having an actual so story. World yeah, tour didn't having an actual story. story. Yeah, but World Tour did kind of have like a series of missions that were like broke, broken off into different chains and stuff. Mm -hmm. Just didn't have the, the veneer of a, of a world map. But like had the basic structure to it. And also like World Tour, in this game you... Uh, unlock characters within the story mode. It's how you unlock characters in this game. And you also earn stars by accomplishing certain tasks with, within each mission. Now, they haven't confirmed this yet, but if this is anything like World Tour, you probably use those stars to unlock the character. So, it's basically kind of, kind of sounds like World Tour with, a little more, with some more production values. I don't know if they do that, because you have to rely on three racers for... Because it's a teamwork thing, so if they well, were I imagine three, that, I don't know if how that would have unlocked each. I imagine that to start out with at least Team Sonic, maybe Team Sonic and Team Shadow. Like it sounds like every single chapter is going to focus on different characters because mm. they, they they said they said that in the Famitsu article, which we're getting all this information from, that um, the the storyline will just focus on the work the the Sonic characters of the game. Like it didn't specify anyone. So I imagine we might be getting like a different team per chapter or something. Mark, yeah, that that sounds. I mean, that's on track with how most. Here's a bunch of characters Sonic games go. Because if you think back to all the Sonic Adventure and the Sonic Heroes, and uh, even just down to like Sonic Battle, that's typically Sonic, how they Sonic kind Riders. of Sonic Riders. Sonic <laughs> Riders. Um, that's typically how it's split up. Honestly. I'm happy to have another kart racer with a single player mode because we still don't get that from Mario Kart. Like, that is uh, the thing yeah, I think Mario yeah. Kart should I, probably have. I would love them to have it. They still don't have it. Mario Kart 8, especially Deluxe, is like my first Mario Kart game that I've ever really loved. But I don't touch that game anymore because I've unlocked everything. I've beaten everything. I guess don't have anything else to do. And since you guys never joined me in multiplayer so that you can destroy me, I don't even have that reason to play it right now. You've never asked. That's because I keep forgetting. Why don't you ever ask? <laughs> because I, I didn't I know you owned it. it and wanted to play. How did you I not don't think I own it anymore. Let me see. Wait, oh, you sold it. Gosh darn it. Jason, Jason. sells everything. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is my part eight one. on the Switch. Hey, I still have arms, and I've had that since day one. Why do you, you still, still have, have arms? arms? You have I arms, like arms. You it's don't a have good game. Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8's a better game. 
Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, but I played to... Mario Kart 8 on <laughs> Wii. Now they just played it again on Switch. I'd love how, and... to know how you played it on Wii. Wii U, pardon me. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, obviously, PX. So, uh, J- Jason, you were trying to bring us into something else? Uh, yeah, this other game that came out while we were gone for two months of our podcast. Uh, you might, guys, you might have seen, oh, here's your podcast just came up two weeks ago. Well, that's because I was extremely late on it. But uh, basically, during that time, uh, this Sonic takes as long. It'll be, uh, won't be two weeks. <laughs> in January. Yes. I mean, in right. July. <laughs> Sonic and, Plus DLC, yes. Hey, there's Mighty and Ray in the back. Uh, I'd, and, I'd uh, buy the physical version. No, nah, this I wanted at least one physical version. Now I have uh, Sonic Mania on all three of my systems. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm making my Xbox One basically like a Sonic machine. It's got because I had so many of the games previously purchased uh, on digital on that system from back in the 360 era. It'll certainly so be them, so like certainly having be, uh, Sonic, Sonic Generations on there now is great. It'll certainly be useful when we go back, when Sonic Revolution comes around again. Yeah, well I used it. The last time, the last year. Yeah, so it's good anyway, to try to centralize um, your Sonic games. <laughs> I guess the main thing to talk about is, of course, Mighty and Ray being added on and the Arc uh, and Encore yes. mode. I enjoy and, them. Yeah, I really like uh, Mighty's uh, big stomp when you press the A button again. I think that's a useful little tool on that. Plus the fact that when you jump on spikes, because he's got armor, the first time he hits it, it doesn't do any damage yeah like he can he can jump on spikes he can jump off of certain enemy attacks he can even bounce off of bombs which is pretty cool like I, I, other people have said this and i do have to agree although i don't care that mighty is kind of an easy mode but it just it feels so different from other sonic characters it makes him more than, so, so much more than just a sonic clone that like i i just don't care like it's you know it, it allows I, him to traverse Certain He's kind of my favorite character to use to be. To go honest. to go out on a limb here that might it, it to say something that might not go over that great with the most impassioned of fans. Sonic <laughs> kind of needs an easy mode sometimes. Yeah, yes he does. Um I like that game. I don't think it's I don't think that style of play is particularly beginner's friendly. Um just because it's based on understanding the basically understanding momentum and plat and how momentum influences a character who has to perform platforming in what is essentially a skate park. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I'm not gonna uh, casual shame people. I love the Wii. I don't do stuff like that. But, um, but uh, th- then, of course, there's also Ray, whom I think I might like him a bit more than everyone else here. Not just because he's adorable, most adorable little boy ever. More adorable than tails, but um, also I. Even though you don't you don't have too many places to use it, I just love how how his glide works. Like yeah, it's basically I, I guess, Kate, it's a Cape yeah, Mario from yeah, it's, it's basically Cape Mario, but it's Cape Mario and a Sonic game. <laughs> <laughs> if you can so, find a good use for, it, if you find an area where you really can fly across for a good long while, then it's useful. But otherwise, it hasn't really come that useful for to me. <laughs> Like, but is it fun? Yes. Yeah. Like so, uh, here's the, here's the difference between Ray and and Cape Mario is that Ray is in a is in a game with much bigger levels where you can really kind of break out break, break out with that kind of move. Yeah. Um, one thing I I gotta say is this is the best Sonic game for as far as having multiple characters and, oh, yes. and being able to use them all on the same levels in different fashions. And I, God, I wish the 3D and Sonics were like this. Like, because... like uh, here, here's a quick quote from my Team Sonic Racing preview. Um, it's, it, it was, since I assume no one's read it, 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 it was like, team-based gameplay has always held Sonic games back in some capacity, like, even Tails in Sonic 2, he would cost you your your, your rings and I mean, special stages. And first stuff. off, you're wrong about that, but you hey. also hate Tails, and you're terribly biased <laughs> as someone who is studying to be a journalist. <laughs> I mean, I, I Tails, I think, is pretty infamous in Sonic 2's special stages. But anyway, but like I was mostly referring to Heroes and Chaotix, which I do enjoy, but I can't like yet. Yeah, 
that cer- <laughs> it certainly was still brought down by extreme mechanics. And um, heroes, damn it, Nate, now I lost track. But anyway, this, but this one, this is the first Sonic game that really, really does team-based gameplay in a way that just adds so much I th- to I, the formula. Yeah, I, I love that when you, you say can collect team-based. all five characters and then mix and match depending on when you hit those monitors. I think when you say team-based, you're more referring to the idea that there are multiple characters in this game and yeah, they sure, have different characters. abilities and i kind of agree the one of the biggest thing one of the biggest theories i have about some of the issues that sega seems to contend with whenever they keep designing whenever they keep having less than stellar sonic games is that they decide well we need to have this character who does this mode and let's give them a whole bunch of stages and let's give them a whole bunch of story and that should not be the case that i mean what they you're don't... talking about sorry go on i'm talking about a lot of games heck i'm talking about sonic forces i'm talking about sonic i'm talking about um Sonic Heroes. I'm talking about Sonic 06. I'm even talking about the adventure games. I think all of those games are held back by trying to develop, like, five different ways to play this game or seven different ways to play this game. I think that Sega and Sonic Team don't have the either financial bandwidth or creative bandwidth to divide their attention like that and create these completely different ways and i think they're better benefited by saying if we need these additional characters these additional characters have to slot in to this mode of play which is one of the reasons why people love sonic 3 and knuckles you have the different characters you have the different experiences but they're defined by how those characters are interacting with the level, they're not defined by the level has to be specifically made so that this particular character gets to use all their magical character skills to treasure hunt and find three gems because that's what we got. Yeah, I agree. With that. I mean, I think, so. I think the problem well, there is... That, but they just had bad level design. The, the Well, the problem there is is that they were trying to pad out the game with slower gameplay styles. Mm-mm. Like, because a, a lot of the characters that, that, that they utilize, um, like, uh, a few, like some of the characters that they utilize, like Knuckles, for instance, like he, he, he can work perfectly well in a speedy Sonic type level because that's where he was created. But, you know, the whole point of these levels was to either like reuse assets to make a two hour game, an eight hour game. Or to just create slower, smaller levels to to, to hit that same goal. Like that—that that was the big issue with the adventure games, with uh, forces, with with unleashed, with heroes to to to, to at least an extent. And I don't disagree in any what's way whatsoever. You know what's a better way to pad this out? Let let me be multiple characters like this in the same type yes. of stages. Like <laughs> I'm not I'm not looking for mm-hmm. much. I, I think at some point Sega Sonic Team got it in their minds that this is just what people want and what we have to do for this, and it's not. It just isn't. It's just you you don't have to. You can please both camp. Well, you can't please all camps uh, because <laughs> you never please all camps. Adventure you because please, adventure fans are still sociopaths. Uh, <laughs> I will go on record. Uh, admittedly, no, that is not Chris, the perspective not of Sonic Stadium. Uh, I do not represent Sonic Stadium, but I will say that uh, Sonic Adve- all Sonic Adventure fans are bad people and should be burned <laughs> in the streets. I'm not a bad person. <laughs> I'm not a bad person, Chris. How can you say that to me? Uh, but yeah, I I just think this makes sense. It makes it, sense for what this game is and what they want to do. And this is another situation where I sincerely hope Sega is looking at Sonic Mania and the things that Sonic Mania does and takes away the right lessons. <laughs> I don't think or they will. Or alternatively, just let that team make more <laughs> Sonic games. Yeah. Which is what I would prefer. I, they just did it so well. <laughs> I d- don't. I'm not saying one denies the other. 
But I am saying Sega needs to look at this game and learn what this did right. But let's let's go back to Encore mode for a minute because we haven't really discussed too much what it actually does because it it really in many ways completely changes how you play the game because the live system is gone. Rings at rings are basically only there to well, they're still you, lives, but they're but, basically uh, yeah, but the lives me, of the characters. Yeah, but and you can let, uh, let try to get the cannon back in the boat. In the bonus let, let, let me approach this from a from a structural point of view. So, like the rings are just utilized to enter special stage, enter special stage, enter the pinball special stage, where you can unlock characters and add them to your team after they die. Because in this game, as Jason just said. The characters are your lives, and once they're gone, they're gone. Until you either find a an, a uh, monitor that has their face on it, or you <clears throat> manage to get them a, a, out of the, uh, the the pinball machine. The pinball machine. What, uh, Chris? Go on. No, I, w- I was saying. Ah. I was gonna say I'm not that crazy about the pinball machine for the bonus level. I, I mean, like it's it. okay for snatching up the characters but other than that it's not very fun to play in, in my personal like opinion. like um i don't know it's just it's just as kind of a standard pinball machine but when in the context of sonic's of, of sonic likes what what's the word bonus stages i honestly do, do kind of like it more than say that one with the uh twist twisting uh Spheres that you jump off of and stuff, and you, know, you got to outrun that energy beam at the bottom. Like, like it kind of reminds me of something like the gumball machine. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like, like that. Like, I, I, the physics took me some getting used to. They're a little weird, especially since you got like direct the ball a bit with your with the analog stick. But, um, but uh, beyond that, like as soon as I figured out how to control it, like I was, I had I had fun with it. I, I had fun with it like maybe the first dozen times or so and after that it just kind of became okay i'll it's just play like this until i get all my characters go a little back. higher i mean you only get like <laughs> I, I, three I feel tiers like and then that's it rather than go higher i think we just kind of needed different ones that different uh, d- designs that could kind of be come up randomly but um but but yeah like so it's really weird being able to pl- being able to like have tails with Ray following you or Mighty or whatever, and like you can easily switch between them for different situations. But you've got to kind of um, and when you like re- reach reach one of those item monitors that will co- change your characters, you got to like you know think, okay, do I want to keep this one or not? Like there's strategy involved, <laughs> and it just adds another a whole new layer of depth to. to to, to this game that just doesn't exist in the base game, even though like, and, and so and so like this completely shapes how you play it. Even though like the, the actual levels aren't really all that different from the the, the regular mode, like uh, aside from 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 some color palette swaps and the first level of that desert stage, mm-hmm. which they gave us a new one of those, and a new Angel Island, which that was all that was that was neat. <laughs> Yeah, so there are some little different nuances here and there. Like, like they changed where the uh, rings are hidden. I do know that people who were bought like a thirty dollar game and expected like it to be worth thirty dollars, which apparently happened. And like, I guess kind of feel like, why would someone look at a game from this perspective? Because to me, like the value was always clear. It's five dollars of DLC. I mean, if you're, pay- if you're paying thirty bucks, you're basically paying for the physical, a, a brand new physical game plus an art book. Yeah. To, to be fair, to be here's the thing. They might look at that because they paid thirty dollars for it. Like, admittedly, as people who follow this better, we kind of knew what we were getting into whenever we were getting into it as someone who isn't going to buy the physical copy because I just I bought I bought the big freaking box that has the giant <laughs> Sonic statue in it. Yeah. I'm not gonna give them another extra thirty so I could yeah. buy the game. Yeah, um, that, that's that's my position. <laughs> I'm just gonna pay five bucks. I did because my... I'm a massive tool. Yes. I mean you yes, are, yes. but uh, that's sure. <laughs> By yeah. the way, uh, Mi- shout yes. out to Sega for uh, 
for telling us in advance that the Xbox One ones don't come with the reversible cover. So I uh, well, not all some of them do, but not all of them, and mine didn't. So I had to order one. But it came in less than a week. And that was free, so that was very cool. But yeah, I I think that it may not be a great price for this game. Um, thankfully, you don't have to pay that price. You can just buy it digitally and pay the extra little bit for just a little bit less. But I would say in the context of this particular franchise, it's worth the, what, like 25 bucks with the DLC upgrade? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say it's probably worth that. You can get that amount of content so long as you're willing to say, I beat the game with Sonic. I wonder mm -hmm. how this game plays with Tails or Knuckles or Ray or uh, uh, Mighty. Now, 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 but now, for the, for the record, like, while I saw the, these views from from a couple of people on the internet, one of them was a uh, an IGN reviewer, which... I think should have known better than to eh. look, look at look at the game like that. Listen, listen, listen. Like <laughs> I don't know. Like you I'm not going to be too. You can't deny I the agree. fact that this is a. They are selling this game for thirty dollars uh, as a physical retail copy, and that is going to rub some people the wrong way when they find out it's a Genesis game that. <laughs> is of a certain length and of a certain type and of a certain quality. Like, that is a legitimate criticism someone could have. Like, I don't want to dismiss that out of hand because that's what this game is. Well, the, the reviewer was specifically and, yeah, criticizing the lack of It's gotten the, the best scores of any Sonic game in the last, like, 20 years. Sure, you know, I Not mean, that it was a Genesis game or whatever, but the, but the lack of new content if I, for, for, for this new release. Oh, well, if, if, they're, if they're expecting it to be the same thing, if they're expecting it to be, well, this is all the brand new stuff, and you're paying 30 bucks even though you already spent 20 on it, that's a little bit more questionable. Yeah, like um, th that. I guess I didn't describe think, describe it properly. That's that's what I was referring to. But <laughs> on the but if you have the digital, if you have the digital version, and then you go out and buy the physical version, expecting a ton of new content from it just because it <laughs> costs ten dollars less, then you're probably an insane person who goes to GameStop and buys Funko Pop shirts. <laughs> Yeah, I think mean, you're basically spending thirty dollars on an art book, five dollars, five dollar DLC, and the box. You no, know, that, you're, that's you're basically spending ten bucks for a box. That's that's basically what. Be you're one buying. of us, GX. One of us. One of us. Wow, those are those are. I will be happy with my tiny Lego representation of pop culture figures. So now, like, before we go too far off of the rails here, there is one it. One criticism I have for the new DLC, and that's the new special stages. Has anyone here beaten a special stage in Encore mode yet? No, it's because I, you know, I don't like game. that because the original ones that came with Media were already hard enough as it is. And these are just already insane. really hard. So these <laughs> ones are impossible, basically. Now, like, and I enjoy these special stages, like the ones in the in the, in the regular game. They're like my favorite Sonic special stages, but these are just sadistic, and they're so difficult to repeat. Until like I, there's no, there, I, I, I just gave up trying to tr trying to trying to beat them. Be, be, but before I, think I beat they the just game. designed them for the <laughs> hardcore fans who are really going to go at. I mean, it. that's kind of what Encore mode is for. It's like. Here is this extra difficult challenge that we made. You only have, you don't have lives. You just have characters that you'll be able to swap a, between, so long as you have the lives to justify that. It, yeah. it kind of strikes me as, yeah, this is, this is the encore mode. This is the mode that you play after you've actually beaten the game and you've had some experience and you're looking for the challenge. Like I. Nah. I it it may be tougher. I don't know how much I could fault for that. I have a little confession to make. I haven't I haven't bought the upgrade yet. I'm I'm still what I haven't seriously. Uh, you, you've been here talking about talking about this with us. <laughs> you haven't even touched it. I, what the heck? <laughs> I played Sonic Mania. 
I got all the other. I got all the collect a blue sphere special stages, and I turned them all gold. Like okay, I haven't I done put, that. I put in my time in that <laughs> game. I've gotten close. I have the blue sphere. Stage. I have not come close. Challenge to me. But I've also beaten 2.5 Mega Man games in that amount of time. Chris, Chris, I, I have a recommendation for you. I it's, it's the DLC for this game called Sonic Mania. Five bucks, it's totally worth it. I think you should pick it up. I think I might do that at some point. Yeah. You've you've, yeah. you've sold me on this idea. So, but tell, but tell me, tell me, tell me, though. I think I've seen this DLC... In stores, <laughs> and I could get it in a box. Am I gonna get like don't thirty bucks worth of um, no, thing of this? You or? Unless you really, really unless you have no. don't previously own the game, then no. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so uh, that's saying I love the fact that we live in an era where we have a boss fight where I could have Mighty the Armadillo and Ray <laughs> fighting Knack the Weasel. And be yeah, the that is so the awesome. Man. I that, I guess fangasm. I too am aware that. of fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Archie Comics is not fan fiction. They had all those characters. So there. Sure. <laughs> I think we about covered everything we could. I, I assume this, that uh, Jason. Look, I assume you haven't played the multiplayer in, in DLC, yeah? Uh, no, that that's not online, huh? Well, nope. I I think we can all at least agree. Mighty and Ray for Smash. Oh, <laughs> I wish. I yeah, wish, I doubt that's going to uh, happen. I mean, Knuckles is at least a trophy. I see sh a shadow happening as what, what do they call those? The, the verse skins? Echo characters. Echo, echo, echo character. character, yeah. Yeah, like everyone's saying that Shadow's going to be in it. Yeah, like, he, if Dark Samus can be in it as an Echo, like, I don't see why we wouldn't get King Shadow. King K. Rool can be in <laughs> the game well yeah but, but uh, look king k rule is way cooler than shadow <laughs> well, everyone in that game is much cooler than shadow Crom hey. is cooler than shadow hey. pichu is cooler than shadow but, no, that's a goddamn lie no it's not oh, people will hate that me but i think silver lie. is cooler than shadow in a lot of ways oh i mean ian flynn even ian sure. flynn silver is cooler than shadow even Ian oh, Flynn, cool, yeah. even even Ian Flynn Silver is cooler than Ian Flynn Shadow. <laughs> <sighs> well, um, let's see. Was there anything else? Uh, oh uh, no! Come on. There was no. We're we're, we're done here. I there was one was the thing. There was like one thing I'm trying to remember, and it's not coming to me. It was, pro it was I guess it was pretty minor. Well, we talked about Sage, so that was about it. Yeah, it was, it, it was Sonic Mania Plus related, and I, damn it. <laughs> well, there was the Sonic Mania Adventures. We didn't mention that, you know, that wrapped Wait, up. Did, didn't we talk about that in the last podcast? Uh, no, because that... Sonic Mania Adventures is came out, the final episode came out the day the uh, game came out, the Sonic Mania Plus. Right, right. Okay, I forgot. It's been so long. I forgot there was such a huge gap between. And that, I just love that ending so much. We're just. Uh, yeah. I mean, Sonic, had, you know, is getting super, trying to save the day, and Knuckles just comes in and punches the hell out of <laughs> Metal Sonic and goes and walks off with his master. Uh, I'll, and the rest I'll of them the are just looking around like, okay. <laughs> I'll give the animators this. They are really good at visual humor. Like that, that, I mean, they had to be since there's no talking, but they get. Oh yeah, well, it's pretty much it. all Tyson Hess in this, and he, he was. Well, fantastic. no, it's not just Tyson Hess. It's it, it's an ent entire production company. Did they have yet. storyboard uh, writers? Because I thought he was the main writer. Ty Tyson Hess, I think, did story did some did storyboards. He did uh, and he did like he designed the characters, did the character sheets. But I I know it was like animated by an entire group of people called Neko Productions. So like, th th this stuff is never gets done by one or two people. But I'm yeah, like, I hope that where Tails is starting to choke on the. I the I know that dog. this was basically done to promote Sonic Mania Plus, but I really do hope we somehow get more of these in some capacity because I they were really enjoyable. Probably not for a while, but if they do a Sonic Mania two, I'm sure they'll do that again. Probably. Oh please, please, we need like. We need one for the Sonic Mania 2. 
and then one for the DLC, and then one for the next one. Yes, yes, let's, let's, they, they, they need to do that. So, yeah, we, I... so we need multiple Sonic uh, Mania games in the future so that we can ensure we get more Sonic Mania cartoons. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Sonic <laughs> Mania that's, 2 that's plus. Exactly it. Plus. <laughs> anyway, that's yes, about... Plus plus. It, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but now I've completely forgotten what it was. Oh, anyway, um, thank you all for showing up. Uh, this has been a a good podcast here. We've gotten caught up on the last uh, two months worth of a ton of news out of, uh, for, you know, Sonic in these past two months, especially when it comes to the movie the and the uh, upcoming Team Sonic Racing. Um, you can catch us, we, both me and Alex here on Sonic Stadium. We do articles every once in a while and uh, do news posts when we can. And you can catch uh, GX on to spindash.com. Oh, uh, probably uh, more likely uh, twitch.tv slash the spindash. Uh, I still aspire to have some new content up very shortly. I've run into some technical issues with um, the latest show I want to premiere, but we'll see how that goes in the future. Um, probably have some youtube links and if i am depressed uh the next time we meet up for an episode it is because i will have watched probably about four episodes of this new mega man cartoon <laughs> no chris oh no. good lord i'm staying by the way I, I do have a there, i saw uh, some scenes from that and there's like a little man living inside mega man's head <laughs> yep Doesn't that, he, like, that's mini mega. mega man or something that's Mini Mega. He lives inside. Oh, he controls Action, Mega Man's powers. Yeah, um, yeah. That that's a show. That's a show. I I but promised the... myself that I would give a chance of four episodes uh, if I watch four episodes and decide this is not for human consumption. Then I will stop. <laughs> but well, I have way, to at uh, least try. I have a prediction to make. The regardless of how good either movie is. Detective Pikachu will be a better movie than the Sonic movie. Oh, of course. That that's not a prediction. That's just a statement <laughs> of fact. It's a future <laughs> fact, but it's still a fact. <laughs> uh, oh man. There's one where I could accept the live action, you know, area with a little a computer animated. Yeah, because well, it's Pikachu gonna be stupid. Because the premise of the game is stupid. <laughs> and the movie's gonna be stupid. Therefore, you could probably have a good time with it. And there's something to think about when you're thinking about Sonic the movie. Maybe it's going to be like Street Fighter the movie with Raul Julia, where it's, it's so stupid that it's incredibly enjoyable. No, the Sonic movie is not going to be as stupid as Street Fighter the movie. That movie is gloriously stupid. That, stu that movie is stupid in a joyous, joyous way. <laughs> that's true all right and that's gonna wrap it us for up for us and we'll see you next time bye bye peace see ya.